Hello, Joey from Underrated Airsoft here. Welcome back to my channel, where today I'm going to be showing you and discussing how I made this custom leather holster for the Far Sand Double Broad Shotgun. Let's get into it. This is everything you are going to need. Some decently thick leather, some needles, a diamond punch set, a hole punch set, an X-Acto knife, some wax nylon, pliers of any kind, and optional is a Sharpie pen. Let's get into it. Once you pull your leather out of the package and you cut it to shape, make sure it's the exact same size as a piece of printer paper. Because once I get the templates up, this is what you're going to use to cut your holster to size. Now, just cut it out with an X-Acto knife, box cutter, razor knife to size. It also helps if you use some scotch tape to tape down your template so it doesn't move around. Also, once you have one side cut, go ahead and use the black sharpie to go across that line so you don't lose your cut. Once you have your black line drawn, go ahead and cut the rest of it out with a razor knife. Now, leatherworking can be kind of an expensive hobby. I mean, this leather alone was around 50 bucks, but Hobby Lobby has a lot of sales and I got this stuff for 30 bucks. So definitely keep an eye out for Hobby Lobby deals. And you can also buy leather on other platforms if Hobby Lobby doesn't have a good enough price for you. Now, back to the holster. So. One thing I forgot to mention is your leather is going to want to flex because it's been rolled up. It's going to want to uh, move and do this. The way you can solve this is by getting a little water dish and gently rubbing some water on it. It doesn't need to be super soaked, but just enough to get the leather to behave. Just, just rub it on, get the leather to, um, this is going to soften the leather and make it way easier to work with. So just do that on this side and the other side and you should be fine. Now the back is a lot more absorbent than the front so be sure to really get a lot of water on this because the water is gonna soak into the leather and it's gonna make it a lot more pliable and this is really important for when we start bending it to shape. So um, get all this nice and wet and get the um, front nice and wet. So will be able to um, conform it to the shape of the shotgun. All right, now the leather is being a lot more um, cooperative. It's nice and straight, and it's being a lot more um, easier to deal with. All right, now let's finish cutting out the rest of this template, and we'll get to bending and sewing. Now that it's taped down, you can either use some scissors or whatever to finish cutting out the shape. And make sure you sh cut on the outline and don't deal with any of this middle stuff. We'll get to that later. Now that you've cut on all sides, now we have the basic shape of the holster. Now, I apologize if there was any confusion between the main lines and these two lines here. Those are the lines that we're going to put our punch, um, that we're going to punch the uh, sewing bits in. That's actually the area where they two connect and will form the base of the holster. Now what we want to do is we want to get all these, um, bumps out, all these, um, holes and that can be done easily by getting the sharpie and pressing it in the middle of each hole to get the mirrored image on each side of the leather. After that go ahead and use the hole punch on your hole punch stick and punch those out. Hold the um, sharpie over the hole like this and rub it around a few times to get that ink to bleed through the paper and to go on the leather. That's really all you're doing. Go ahead and do that for all nine of the holes. And then, as I said before, just go punch them out. Now, to punch out these holes is extremely simple. All you need to do is use your punch, line it up with the hole, and get something like a mallet or something really heavy and it's made of wood to punch these holes out. It's very simple. Now let's work onto the belt loop. Make sure you do not get this thing wet or else it's just gonna be a pain in the butt when you try to put it on because it's gonna stretch, it's gonna warp, it's gonna do all these funny things that you don't want. Now that you've got your belt loop cut to shape, it's going to go somewhere around here. But we'll cross this bridge later. Just set this part aside for now. Now let's work on getting the stitching done and getting these two to be one. Now, the way you get this line right here is you have to line up the holes. Make sure they're on complete opposite axis of each other, or else the corset tightening system won't work. Now, it's okay if there is a little bit of mismatchingness on the bottom, that's completely fine because you can just trim the excess. Make sure you have your far sand shotgun ready so you can place it inside the holster to do a test fit. 
Now that we're gonna do that, we're going to punch out the holes and get this thing stitched up. All right, now we're going to do the hardest part of this entire build, which is actually not that hard. What you're going to do is you're going to need this craft tool diamond hole um, punching set. You don't really need this one, just something that has really small teeth that can punch to the leather so you can do your stitching. But of course, link to this tool will be in the description. It comes with a whole bunch of pieces. Now what you're going to do is you're going to line up this tool to where this top spike is just barely off of that, off of the edge and line. And go ahead and make your mark. Now that you have your mark there, that is going to be your starting point. Make sure you start right there, slide to an angle, get in there. And that's where you're gonna punch, right there. Now, since the leather is still a little wet, I can just press it in, and I'll have my indentation. But you are going to need some help via a mallet to get all those holes punched through. Now, just repeat the process, and once this hole is punched through, put the end spike on the end hole of the last thing you just punched. Slide it in and press it down. Now, when you get to an area where there is not a whole lot of room, very simple, just subtract a few of the spikes and just make up the difference. Like this, put the spikes like that and press them in. Now what you're gonna do is punch all these holes out. Once that you have all your holes punched out, it's time to move on to the other side. Line up this corner with this corner, roll it up like a burrito. Very simple. Now you're going to count how many holes you have. In this case, I have 13. Put 13 holes using your exact same punch that you used to punch these out and punch about on this side. So right here. And that's all that there is. Just for do the exact same thing I told you to do this one. This is what I meant by rolling it up into a burrito. Take your side piece and push it in to that corner. Now we have to mirror the holes that we punched on the underside on top of this piece of leather so we can stitch them up and the pieces will become one. Very simple. Once you have this corner pushed into here, line, make a little mark right there to signify where the top hole is. That is going to be your starting point, and then just punch all the holes out. After you have punched all the holes, go ahead and stitch them up with some wax nylon. Now, it's going to get really cramped in here, especially when you get towards the top. But don't worry, I have a solution. I would recommend going from bottom to top. Now, we're only going to be doing one stitch. So just in and out, in and out, in and out, like the Loch Ness Monster. And after that, we'll finish up with this build. The solution of avoiding the cramped space is to keep these parts loose so you can get your hand in there. Once you have a very loose um, stitching, pull the stitching gently and it should tighten all up. Also, you might want to use some pliers to grab the stitching and to pull it through. I'll probably mention the snow. Since we're going to be stitching this up, we're going to have this massive flap. So, use an exacto knife and score a line down the side, not to the point to where it connects to the um, stitching, but around the exact same size as this line, but mirrored on the other side, because we're not gonna need this anymore. Once you have all the stitching in place, very carefully go ahead and pull on each one of these strings until this end is very flush with this end. It's gonna be kind of time consuming, but it's worth it when you're done. Right, now that you've finished sewing up your holster, the last few things we have to do is the corset tightening system and the belt loop. First things first, the corset tightening system. All you have to do is take a string of any kind, pass it through this hole and out through this hole. Then lace it up like you would a shoe. Super easy. Now for the belt loop. This is really easy. All you have to do is punch these holes out using a four pronged punching bit and then sew them up. Now, I know it can be kind of hard to punch through here because there is a possibility that the punch will go all the way through and out this side, which we do not want. Just take some scrap leather, shove it down the holster, and compress it, and then punch it. That way, the scrap leather will catch the punch from going on the other side. 
last thing we have to do is trim these ends to make them flush all the way around. All right, so this is what the finished holster looks like. It's all leather, as you saw me build, and the gun just drops right in. Really easy, really simple. That trigger guard just clicks in right here. That was why we put that there. Now, I don't want to um, give it too much hassle because it is still drying, but yeah, it is drawable with one hand. Um, yeah, it's super nice. Um, definitely better than putting it in your backpack on the field. Um, <clears throat> thank you all for watching. Uh, this is Joey from Underrated Airsoft, signing out. Peace.